Hello everybody, I'm back with another video in the Soul Winning uh, Instruction Series. So today I want to talk about when you go over the point of eternal security, right? So after you've already explained to the person you're preaching to all the other points, the fact that they're sinners, that their sin would take them to hell without a Jesus, the fact that Jesus was sent to be our Savior, He's the Son of God, God in the flesh, He died for our sins, rose again, and then all they have to do is believe. After you go through all those different things, it's very important to also talk about eternal security, right? Now, the thing is, eternal security is not like a separate doctrine. Uh, I like the way that uh, a brother from church explained it. He said it's more of like a check to determine whether they really understand that it's by faith alone, right? Because people who deny eternal security or who say you can lose your salvation are basically saying that they have to do something else besides believe, that believing is not enough. It's like, well, believing is the start, but then you have to do other things. That's basically what uh, somebody who denies eternal security is saying, right? So after explaining that getting saved and being justified is just by faith alone, explain that the believer is saved forever and has eternal life, right? Now, some, especially in the old IFB, when preaching the gospel, skip this point because, again, they think it's a secondary doctrinal issue. But really, the person who believes that they can lose their salvation is not saved. So that's why it's very important that you want to address this. Now, hypothetically, if you just show them John 3.16, if they, you know, take it literally, they believe it, then they could get saved without you going in depth about what all that entails. But most of the time, because of false doctrine that's crept into people's minds, it's very important to actually go through and explain this in detail, right? So the reason why somebody who believes that they can lose their salvation is not saved is because they either believe that they still must die for their own sins, right? And thus they don't believe the gospel, right? Because if somebody you're preaching to says, well, if I later commit this sin or that sin, I might go to hell. Basically what they're saying is that Jesus did not pay for that sin. They have to pay for that it themselves still, right? Also, they do not believe God promise, which is eternal life, right? The Bible says in 1 John 2, 25, this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. It says in Titus 1, 2, also in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So again, they're denying uh, the record that God gave of his son. They're denying the promise that God has given. So again, they're not saved. Or they're still trusting in themselves for salvation. They're basically thinking that they still have to do other things in order to keep themselves safe, right? So these are three very clear reasons why eternal security is important to address and why people who deny it are not safe. So you want to preach this as well in order to establish that once you believe, you're safe forever, right? Now, the verses that you could use to explain eternal security, I'll include John 6, 39 to 40. I also use John 6, 47 as well. Uh, John 10, verses 27 to 29. Uh, another one would be Ephesians 4.30, which talks about how we're sealed with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. But these other verses just establish that the life that God gives us is eternal life, right? It says uh, in John 10, for example, which is probably the hardest hitting one, that I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So it's very clear. You can you know, show that to them and explain like, hey, it says never perish. It doesn't say possibly perish. It says never. And it says you're in God's hand, both Jesus and the Father. He says nobody could ever take you out of our hands, right? So it's a very clear scripture to establish that once you're saved, you're saved forever. Now, some questions that you could ask to make sure they're following along include how long is eternal or everlasting, right? So usually the way that I do it is when I show them John three sixteen, right? I say, Whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll ask them, how many things does that say you have to do? They say, oh, it's only one thing. You just have to believe. And then I'll say, notice how it says that he gives you everlasting life. And I'll say, how long is everlasting or eternal? They say, well, that's forever, right? And then after that, I'll go to John chapter 6. I'll either show them verse 40 or verse 47 or both. Uh, to establish that once somebody believes they already have eternal life, right? To explain to them that you don't get saved if you keep believing to the end of your life, but you get saved when you believe. That's when you receive eternal life, right? Another uh, good question to ask to establish eternal security would be, how many of your sins did Jesus die for? So usually after I go to John chapter 6, I go to John chapter 10, and then I explain that, and then I ask them the reason why your salvation is eternal is because did Jesus die for some of your sins or all of your sins? And they say, well, he died for all my sins. So I say, so your future sins that you haven't even done yet, Jesus died for those sins also. So is he going to send you to hell for the same sins? 
They say no, because Jesus already died for them, right? So it's important to bring up uh, the subject of Jesus' death again to explain why it is that somebody is eternally secure, right? I think that's important as well. It really establishes the point that um, it's not just because that's just the way it is, but you can actually kind of kind of reason with them and show them like, well, the reason why your sins cannot take you to hell is because Jesus already paid for those sins. He already died for your sins. So when you believe in him, even your future sins also, which Jesus also died for, those are also forgiven, right? So these are some good questions to ask and verses to show when you're preaching eternal security. It's also uh, good to use illustrations and examples to help make the point. So the gift example, right? Usually what I'll say is I'll, you know, have the Bible in my hand, I'll close it and I'll say, hey, if I gave this Bible to you as a gift and I said, this is yours and I promise it's yours forever, how many times would you have to take it from me for it to be yours? And they say, well, I only have to take it once. And so I say, well, so how many times then do you have to believe in Jesus to receive the gift of eternal life? And they say, only once. And then I say, once you receive it, how long is it yours for? Oh, it's mine forever, right? I say, yeah, because God cannot lie, right? God, if he said he's going to give it to you forever, he means it's forever, right? That means you only have to take it one time, right? You only have to get saved once. Another uh, example, which is good, is the child example, right? To explain that we're children of God, right? As the Bible says, as many as received him to then give you power to become the sons of God, or you're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, right? And to explain the example of discipline, right? In Hebrews chapter 12, how it talks about how God will chasten his children, the Lord, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son we receive it. So to say something like, hey, God will punish you in this life for your sins, but you're his child once you believe. Will he ever send you to hell then? Right. Or you could use if they're like an adult and they have children, you could say, hey, if your child disobeys you, you're going to punish them. You're going to discipline them. But would you ever kill your child? Will there, any, will there be anything that they could do so that they could not be your child anymore? And obviously they'll say, no, of course, you know, they're my child forever. They're always going to be my son or my daughter. So you say it's the same way with God. Once you're born again and you're in God's family, you can never come out of that family. You're always going to be his child. So he's going to discipline you. He's going to punish you when you do wrong, but he's not going to send you to hell. So that's another uh, good example to uh, give those who are struggling with eternal security. Now, another thing which uh, some people skip over, which I think is important, is giving an example like the following, right? So to give them a scenario. Like if you believe in Jesus, but 20 years later, you were to kill somebody, you were to kill yourself, like to commit suicide, right? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Now, the reason why this is important is because you'd be surprised how many people they'd say that no other sin can send you to hell. But because people think that suicide is an unforgivable sin, they think that that could send somebody to hell, right? So that's why I think it's important to address this point. I've talked to a lot of people where they seem to be following along and, and believing everything that I'm saying, but for some reason, they still think that suicide is an unforgivable sin, right? And the reason why is because they still have this kind of thing in their mind where they think that they have to ask for forgiveness or repent of their sins every time they sin in order to be saved, right? So it's important to ask this question to see if they're really following along, if they really understand, if they really believe what you're saying, because sometimes people still think that if they believe they'll always go to heaven except if they commit suicide, right? They think that that's an unforgivable sin, which it isn't. The Bible never says it is. So I always make sure to ask this question because sometimes people will think that they're su that suicide or some really, really bad sin can still send them to hell. So this is a good example to use to make the point that no matter what you do in the future, if you've already been saved, your salvation is forever. You can never go to hell, right? And if Suicide is a hang-up for them if they think it's an unforgivable sin. Some good scriptures to use for that would be, first of all, just to go back and establish that Jesus died for all sins and suicide is a sin as well. But then also uh, Matthew chapter 12, where Jesus says, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven, right? And to explain to them, hey, the only unforgivable sin, according to Jesus, is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And to explain to them, only unbelievers can do that. Because a believer has the Holy Spirit, they will not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And to tell them, basically, that Jesus said all manner of sin, that includes suicide. And say, if Jesus, you know, sent you to hell for suicide, then he didn't keep his promise of eternal life, right? So to basically go back again through eternal security, kind of make the point uh, clearer, use more examples if they still think that these really, really bad sins like suicide could send them to hell. So it's very important to ask this question and use these examples just to make sure they're following along, 
just make sure they understand it and also to make sure that they actually believe what you're saying. Now, one last thing about eternal security is it's also helpful to explain that once somebody believes they have the Holy Spirit and therefore they will not stop believing. Because again, another thing that some people are hung up with is they will understand that none of their sins can ever take them to hell, but they think, well, if I stop believing in the future, then I might lose my salvation, right? But that's why, again, it's important to establish that somebody is only saved one time, that salvation is a one-time event. It's not a lifelong process, and then you'll get eternal life, right? So the gift example, which I talked about before, will help illustrate this, right? To say, hey, you only have to take the gift one time, so once it's yours, it belongs to you. So to explain to them, once you believe in Jesus, it's yours forever, right? God's not going to take it away for any reason because he already promised eternal life, right? And uh, it's, it's just good to explain that, you know, a believer can never stop believing. But then usually what I'll say is even hypothetically, if they could stop believing, it's still forever. And that person will, if they did hypothetically stop believing, God already promised eternal life, right? Just to make that point, right? So it's important, I think, to address this as well. Uh, some people don't really need this, but it's good just as a habit, just to quickly explain that the believer has the Holy Spirit and they will be guided to all truth, as Jesus said. So thank you everybody for watching. And uh, next I'll go into basically the the ending of the closing of uh, the gospel presentation, because this is all the, the main meat of the preaching, I guess. But then we want to get to the wrap up right after you've established that somebody understands by it's just by faith alone and, and that it's eternal. They could never lose it. What to do from there, how to actually seal the deal, if you would. So thank you everybody for watching.